valuable insights into the art of ideation. Before I invite our uh, next panelist on stage, once again, a reminder for all of you, everything that's being showcased on the big screen right here in this hall and in every other um, halls that we have right here at GAFX 2024 is proprietary material. So I would request all of you not to take any pictures or take any videos. Uh, everything that is uh, possible for us to share, we will be doing the same on our websites and on our social media channels. But that said, remember, in case you're talking about Gafix, use the hashtag Gafix2024. Now, in the next special session that we have, we're going to be talking about the principles of ideation for an original IP. And uh, we have the distinguished national award-winning director, Mr. E. Suresh, who's joining us on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for him, please. We also have uh, Mike Joseph, uh, director of uh, Datsi School of Storyteller. And we have uh, Virendra Patil, our creative director at Zebu Animation Studios. A big, big round of applause uh, for the three distinguished gentlemen joining us on stage. Good morning, everybody. This, this is an absolutely cool panel, right? Uh, we have uh, Suresh. I, I don't know how many of you are here to watch the movie that was screened uh, an hour ago. Uh, it is a privilege to, to watch it. Uh, that's Suresh. Let's, let's hear it for him. That absolutely amazing movie. And to my left, I have Michael. Uh, who is the, uh, the head of the school, Datsi, in, in, in the state of Kerala at Trivandrum. Big round for Mike. Yeah. So before we get started in conversing on what we want to talk about, uh, let's watch some of the other stuff that Suresh has produced, and then we can jump into us talking and then us talking with you. Yeah? छोटे सुल्तान बहादुर होशियार पर दूध जवाए हो जाए फरार और ये हम आपको प्रूफ करके दिखाएंगे। अब बिना पानी फेस क्लीन करना। अरे इनके घर को डर कैसा? दो टाइम ही पोड़ ले नीचे के प्रश्न को लो। शुद्धी करे आमार की जाए। Oh, 
Chaos gave way to violence. Andare, tu te te suite aro poli na. Dur, gham hoy. On to te te monkey cap, to cut cut kore. Now I look like number twenty five na. No. Now. All right, as you can see, the diversity in the style of the work that uh, him and his team can create, please have us, right? Uh, it's quite astounding. Uh, today, uh, let me set some tone uh, to what uh, we intend to do. Uh, now, when I started 20, I, I'm gonna say 20 years, even though it's more than that, uh, in the industry, myself, right? We'll stick to 20 years. I never knew where, where my career was gonna go. Right? Uh, this conversation is primarily aimed at all the students that are here, uh, and hopefully uh, you will engage both of them, have uh, discuss with them, talk with them. That's the, the primary purpose of meeting today. So we have, what I have learned in the last 15, 20 years, there you go, I reduced it by five years more, uh, is that all kinds of uh, content needs to be created, all kinds of content needs to exist. Uh, I, I, I genuinely believe uh, if, I, if I represent the commercial uh, side of a studio and pr producing content as a service, Mike represents the education sector from India, and Suresh has his own niche, and today, I, even though he does a lot of many different things, but today he, he's gonna don the hat of of an artist and a thinker, a philosopher, and a filmmaker, right? We need to know how he can find space in this mad, mad rush of trying to create thousands and thousands and thousands of minutes every week, right? So that's basically the contest, uh, context for the talk we're gonna have. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. sounds good. So Mike, all yours, you can, you can start from yeah, so uh, maybe I should direct something to you. <laughs> so there was, a, I remember once we were talking and uh, <clears throat> you were saying that it's become a level playing field and that because of the technology disruptions that have happened, the ideas of the democratization of media, more, not really democratization, but at least accessibility. So everybody now is, on this, you know, at the beginning point, whether you're in Hubli or whether you're in California. So then, in this sort of a new scenario, what are the challenges that we need to address to move ahead into a space of uh, IP and content creation in India? Actually, it goes for both. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think Suresh, you want to start? I, I really feel um, local is the way to go. Um, and that's what we have uh, discovered in a pretty roundabout way, okay? In, in uh, 2005, six onwards, I've been, I figured out that Indian IPs, when we were trying to create IP way back then, you know, we, we had a series of one feature film idea, a uh, couple of series ideas, 
and we we are looking at how can we we knew that you know you cannot there is no market for uh, local uh, you know local market cannot support uh, our ip so we thought you know we'll go abroad sell it there and then it may come back to india because if most of the indian uh, uh, channels were going and buying stuff from there uh, like for example at, at mipcom in can we used to go every year to sell our products and we, sh we used to see all the broadcasters from india going there and buying second hand third hand yeah. stuff at very cheap rate to show it in uh, show it here and, uh, and because they didn't they didn't want to spend beyond a point of budget to create content here it was the scenario there and uh, so we 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 tried for maybe 9 10 years going and we we got some contracts and we did some work together with some international companies but they were not creating an animation situation here see like uh, a scenario where we can create indian uh, animation indian original content for our own people um, is the most ideal scenario that i i feel should happen for uh, any content developer in this in, in the space because if we have our own like 1 1.2 billion uh, no how much hundreds it's four now no 1.4 billion nah, people be out of that even say 10 50% uh, of people start watching our own animation films then we don't have to go out and sell our stuff and you know we don't have to do anything this entire manpower that is so talented can be used to create our own content so it, that's i mean i'm talking about the ideal scenario that that will only happen when 50% of india's population wants to consume indian uh, local animation so my attempt whatever i've been doing as an ip creator is create at our own cost local content see how people are consuming i mean there are evidences that people are loving what we are doing as content and uh, there is an audience for it there has to be a persistence in creating stuff for uh, the our audience so then i think there will be a market that will emerge so then you, it doesn't matter wherever you are sitting uh, in india you can create your own content and there will be an audience for it is is the ideal most scenario that i i feel we should be looking at which which can happen it's not an impossibility i always look at Jap japan as an example like you know japan um, when they created anime i mean they, of course they have a very rich manga culture people read comic books and the characters on the comic books become very very popular so without you know with with blinders you can just take that characters and make an anime on them it will be a super hit in india we are unfortunately there is no unifying literature across the country and uh, hence ramayana and mahabharata are like used again and again and again and again to derive characters <coughs> use use the recall with the names from those characters so we, because uh, we are we don't have one like what what we like in karnataka here uh, as a literature or a cinema might not be the literature and cinema that might be like in somebody in up or in calcutta somebody sitting in kerala may like a certain kind of uh, cinema which is not really liked by the somebody sitting in gujarat the concept of hero with a mustache uh, in the south was considered villain in the north so there is so much of disparity in the way perception so in in india like japan it is very difficult to get a um, unified content which is not watered down so uh, which is again a challenge one of the examples good example is watered down content is bollywood bollywood uh, caters to all the masses it doesn't have a singular character it is not punjabi it is not south indian it is they try to become so blurry edged that they don't have character at the end of the day you know it's it's some action whatever film at the end of the day because that's what would appeal to the masses but i i don't know whether that's a way we should push our content as uh, you know if, if when it comes to ip development is what i'm i'm thinking of uh, we should start maybe small again i i will just complete my chain of thought with japan ja japanese anime turned out to be they had to make it cheaper than disney animation so they had much lesser frames uh, in terms of drawing 
so they had economy of having lesser frames but great looking frames and that today has become a trend people are liking that uh, that as a style of uh, storytelling a lot lot more than disney disney is successful because they pump in maybe three fourth of their budget into marketing and you know pushing the sales but it's J japanese have really managed how local content which they made for themselves is now for export and world over people are consuming it it is not probably something that in they envisaged when they started making content for locals so similarly if we today bollywood also is for export a lot of people are loving uh, people who are not indians are also liking bollywood for entertainment pure entertainment not for great cinema but for pure entertainment they're loving it so here too if in uh, if we find a language for animation films which is our own authentic voice which is first consumed by our own people then if people are liking uh, elsewhere is fine but uh, there are challenges uh, we are facing there also i think did i answer your question or i just went yeah. no, no. only <laughs> all over the there place there like <laughs> another five questions i just I, I just that. said everything that i had to no. say <laughs> no, to add to what suresh said uh, the beginning of the resurgence of cgi animation in india right in the early, late 90s and early 2000 uh, the i mean we all went for the lowest hanging fruit i mean that's the service work uh, so the red the, the biggest concern we have today as we are transitioning from there trying to move up a value chain the biggest red flag there is our education system right we all our education system not only in animation but also outside of education it's designed for an industrial era ecosystem right where follow rules stay in the lane don't think out of the box uh, listen to grown ups whatever things like that now what happens when we try to start attempting these things uh, mike the education we have to look i mean it becomes ultimately our responsibility the, the kids are going to they are going to take what's available if this is all that's available that learning software is the only way to learn filmmaking if that's all we put emphasis on and that's what they're going to do right i think we need to change how we think we are going to teach and what we think we need to teach i uh, uh, only then the the succession plan can yeah. happen otherwise it's just going to be few individuals here and there and uh, there's never going to be a mass movement there of won't be a moment. Uh, yeah yeah f f finally we need to find a, a, an ecosystem where which is fertile to allow what suresh is uh, saying to happen and sadly that is not the case of the educational system not only within art and design but i think at a larger level there are attempts to reform it at the moment uh, both from the center and even at the state level but uh, i think one thing that is very concerning is first of all there is a marginalization that is coming from the fact that art and design is not considered a profession and uh, more an extra curricular activity or a hobby that is slowly got destroyed today i think the younger generation have caught on to it the older generation are still grappling to allow their younger wards to go into that space but if we look at the creative industries today it is a viable proposition i mean choosing a profession or choosing a career here is a viable profession because the creative industries we talk of a creative industries we talk of creative capital we talk of a creative economy Uh, so it's not just a, a side show um, another concerning thing i think is the uh, idea of context and uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> sorry i think the the kids are going i'm saying some yeah. of the kids okay. are like <laughs> <laughs> yeah off they go <laughs> they are like oh, bus enough you <laughs> know <laughs> 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 uh, yeah so the uh, i think the the idea of i mean if art is to be something uh, that is a response of an artist to the world around him and his lived or her lived experience then situating learning within context is very important and therefore the uh, you know what especially i think in the animation sector the education space has been very technocentric and uh, therefore it has been devoid of a certain sense of aesthetics 
and also storytelling, you know, and I think we need to return back to those two things for uh, for this thing to open up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel uh, if, if you base it on storytelling, no? uh, the education itself, uh, and technology <coughs> uh, being a support uh, or, a, or a tool to realize the storytelling, then I think things will fall in place. Like, I'm, I'll tell you, I studied design for all the students here. I, I studied at the National Institute of Design, five years in a campus, um, and we were taught the fundamentals, no software. And, we, and then I, I learned a lot of software at work. It was not very difficult to learn software. Going out there and learning a software is not really going to make you a storyteller. And a, a software expert without the story idea in place <coughs> is, some, is someone you may call a geek sometimes or you know, somebody who is not involved in the whole uh, game. And, <coughs> and it is always a problem when uh, technology, the technology experts don't know the entire scenario. I always say it is much better for a person to be a generalist for you to become a specialist uh, eventually. So now the learning itself is starting from a specialist. So you become a rigging artist is where it begins. Because we have a market in India, job market, which, which draws such people. No? And I have always seen, like the, there are a lot of good lighting experts uh, who learn lighting and they work with big companies. And I, when I give a test and I tell a lighting artist, set me up a scene which with these two characters and give me a romantic mood. They don't know how to do that. They don't know what is mood. They don't know what is that romantic mood looking like, what should it need, what sort of lighting, or they have no idea. So when I say, okay, same situation, make it into a scenario where it is going to be a horror. It can be achieved with just lights, but the lighting expert needs a reference to be given and that's the way we are teaching them today at the education situ situation, that you, g you get a uh, pre-production docket from a company and you look at it and then copy it and make sure that your image that you're creating is very similar to that. That is not creativity. So that's not really making that person think, how do I create this scene? It is, it is making that person, I mean, he's just monkeying something. He or she is just monkeying an image that you've got in the morning, you come to the desk and see this, this is what you have to do to by the end of the day. And you're just sitting and monkeying. What software is also is written? Use this for, uh, use this part, uh, Photoshop, use this uh, brush, use this uh, intensity, use this color shades. Everything is given. What is creative in that whole process then? So what, what instead of us creating hands uh, with our education, we need to also create hands with heads. So yeah, I think that's been the divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I think we have separated the hand from the head and we need to reconnect that, yeah, you know? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, uh, there have been instances in, in the studio where an animator tells me that so the board is not clear, so I'm stuck. I mean, like, uh, isn't that an opportunity yes. to fill the board in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? But the mass production ecosystem uh, insists on a certain uh, theology on how we need to approach uh, content creation. And on the context of generalist and specialist, I, I think, Jakob, at the end of it, you, I know you have a very strong opinion about it too. So I think you should also talk about it when we are done here. Uh, let, let everyone else hear, because at Dotsi, uh, Jakob actually spoke on the subject of what does a specialist mean and what a generalist means right. from a CG supervisor perspective. Right, right. So right. That, could be an interesting, uh, to, that could be interesting for, for, the, for the rest to hear too. Yeah, see, also what this ecosystem does also, you know, this, this sort of a job market ecosystem, there are so many talented people like you, but uh, when I try to do a film, like a short film, I cannot take the help of any of the experts out there because they're prohibitively expensive. But the, this job market works in such a way that, you know, if, if a company poaches a set of uh, uh, artists, they make the salaries go up, even if it is like 5K or 10K or whatever, but eventually it becomes a prohibitively expensive 
space where they cannot be used by the local uh, content storytelling at all. They become exclusive to that market which caters to the international job market, which is just a drain of talent, right, in one way. They are sitting here, but they are not of any use for us. So, uh, Suresh uh, and Mike, uh, I mean, I had the privilege of meeting Uncle Pai once, huh. okay, and I got proper scolding. So, I went and met him, uh, this was in uh, early 2000. When I met him, I went to him and said, sir, uh, big fan, one of the, one, you are one of the primary reasons right. why, uh, why I, I, I gravitated towards this industry, right? And then he, he was courteous and he's like, okay, well done, welcome. And then he asked me, what do I do? I said, uh, I have an animation studio. And that's when he took off. <laughs> this was the same thing he took off on. And right. you're, you are pulling artists of the comic book industry. You're paying them prizes that the, e the local e ecosystem cannot sustain. sustain. Or s and in the process, the, the, or the genesis of making movies Comics play a huge role, like, like you alluded to about your uh, Jap Japan uh, yeah. narrative, right? So, in the race of trying to create service work, we, we, uh, we uh, you know, uh, we, we ripped apart the comic industry and we pulled everyone on the other side and start production, right? Uh, so, yeah, that's what happened. That's exactly what happened to me. I, I, I know... But I think the new education system should be instilling that. I can see a lot of young people here who are interested in indie com, uh, uh, comic festivals. I see them. There are, the, there are people who purchase comics, the young, young bunch I'm talking about. They support each other. Uh, they, they, you know, they create, they purchase each other's comics. So that, that is a very, very positive side that I'm seeing. You know, such uh, people, yeah. if they are encouraged a little more in the, with educational uh, setups, it, then we have we are getting into a resurgence of this whole culture of comics inspiring animation uh, and the you know comic comic becoming popular because it's a cheaper thing to consume and if they the characters come emerge great, great and yeah. popular then we may be able to make animation based on them yeah. uh, I don't know Mike if you noticed that animal and Mumbai a few weeks ago there are about 25 30 kids uh, with a yeah. stall under the banyan trees and uh, trying to sell their comics. Uh, they have it everywhere. Yeah, uh, it is so refreshing. To they see. have it in Bangalore. They have it in Chennai, Ko Kochi. They have these festivals where they, they organize it themselves. And, uh, and there is a lot of demand and great work. Yeah. They're trying Absolutely to do. amazing work. I think yeah. also because of the, the production being cheaper and therefore more uh, ac accessible, the thematics also and the concerns of the stories are much more moving to the edges, there's a lot of, there's a sense of yeah. dis dissent, in, dissent in a good sense of critique true, and true. things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're, what, what makes them interesting is they are aware of the, uh, you know, the socio-economic, cultural context, yeah. which most of the people in this big setups are not privy to or they're not concerned about it. Okay, what's happening in Gaza? It doesn't matter. What's happening in, uh, in India, wherever... It doesn't matter to a lot of people, but these comic artists are concerned about it. They express and they are sensitive about these things yeah. and they're expressing it very uh, openly, which also makes them uh, very responsible in communication. So, and then eventually their, their stories and their characters mm. that emerge can become inspiration for uh, animated series. Of course, there could be resistance from the governments and other bodies the, yeah, that's the always there. But uh, these, these people are like able to, to break those barriers the, and, yeah, like, uh, and talk about their everyday existence, which yeah. is probably the purpose of art, you know. Exactly. And, and to move to a space where you're, you're, you know, where the mind and so I think this disconnect of the mind and the hand is also a problematic of the education system. Either you're, uh, you know, you're cerebral and you're academic, or if you're not that, then you're vocational or skilled. Whereas I think uh, we come from a space which is in the middle, right. which is a practice-based space, yeah. which calls for both. But the structure does not allow that, you know. Mm. And uh, that's why I think even in terms of developing art and design curriculum 
uh, we're being tried to fit into a geography sort of way of looking at thing which right. doesn't work. You know, but so you know, sometimes like in a student ca cult community, you tell them, okay, wha come up with a concern that you want to work on. And if we kind of make them do a comic book or a storyboard or an animatics or even a film in a workshop, like, you know, mm. then they would definitely, uh, like, fight and people will come together and create something that is very powerful. Yeah. Because, and they're, they, they would start owning it as their own. Yeah. I, and that, is, that ownership is very important for a creative work. Um, yeah, because from there will come the sense of authorship. Yeah, exactly. And, and what is lacking, I feel, is yeah. the idea of... If I was to uh, ask you to name 10 live action uh, directors, I can name it like right. from Gattak to this, 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 this. Uh, correct. But if I am to name 10 Indian animation, animation directors, filmmakers, yeah. I will struggle. Yeah. You know? And I think that's where we need to go. The idea exactly. of authorship and voice Absolutely. needs so to that, be that encouraged. Is those, the, the had to, has to be a cult of animation filmmakers from this country who have who are daring to tell stories from here and create i'm not saying you know d you, you can derive stories from uh, mythologies if you're if you're lost but you know you don't need to always stick to that there is no. i mean real people are interesting i'm finding you very interesting hmm. as a character i mean <laughs> like it's, it's you know yeah. like you're, I, i'm looking at you and i'm looking at this einstein there is a lot of uh, yeah. that you know so so much character is there in, in you and then where do i have to look for other characters in ramayana and mahabharata and all yeah. i mean i can create i can take take off from here only like so our yeah. local our surroundings itself can be so exciting and that's what i think students need to know that you know you don't need to feel deprived okay there is nothing interesting there is everything is interesting here yeah like some of my friends who come from uh, like paris and stuff they they look at bombay small shops kiosks and they said oh my god they look so amazingly the production design looks so crazy I know. like if you start making it in cgi with every sort of chaos that you have to build it'll be like a lifelong affair to create that sort of a shop the way that guy is done absolutely there is every single shop as a character distinct distinctive um and, you know, we, we are in a stage, in, India is today in a stage where we are embracing homogeneity, which is a bad thing for India. We are, we, are, we are shredding our character. Every household or a building looks like a five-star hotel, and no five-star hotels have a character. And uh, they all are blocks. They don't have any, 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 uh, anything like, okay, this is Indian. But look at our street houses or, I mean, uh, those have character. Absolutely. Even a hawker walking with a telagadi has a character of what he is carrying, what he is making. But if it, be if it becomes a homogenized culture, then we are going to shred all this character very soon. Ecologically, it is not viable. If it's we talk viable, of yeah. eco-diversity, we need to talk of <laughs> cultural diversity. Otherwise, the environment is not a healthy environment. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, like in Kerala, I'm, I'm from Kerala, so when I, each, each time I go to Kerala, the, you, you kill the architecture there oh every boy. single time and you know it's becoming a, it, it's becoming like any other city like big cities are supposed to become characterless very uh, practical uh, blocks with roads intersection signal and remove the character that's that's where we are going you know put metro which looks like any other city's metro which so you know then we'll say oh this looks like abroad I mean, we feel very good about it. Oh, the metro looks seriously like, you know, it's like exactly how it looks, uh, feels like in Amsterdam. That we are removing character. And they are, in th all those countries are trying to revive back the character, this, which is one of the reasons why if you see in any city, old towns are most interesting. Why is it so? Because they have retained the character. And uh, uh, when an animation student or someone who is not sensitive about it, and you ask him to make a house, the house that he would design would be so mundane and so boring if they, they're not aware of what, what sort of characteristics there in your local land. Then you will not be able to give that in your story, right? So, True. yeah. So, uh, what am I cribbing about? I don't know. You're not. You're, <laughs> no, you're, you're, say, not. <laughs> you're saying that there's a lot of resources out there which we're not, we're just assuming are there, we are not even... Oh, cognizant that they are resources, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, it, it. and I think it is a great learning tool for our young uh, generation to 
be sensitive about these things. That Absolutely. You know, the existence yes, any of, of you, these. Any of you want to become city planners, here's an input, right? Yeah. Don't destroy a fire, 500 year old building to put a cube there. Yeah. 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 A glass cube that look that could be anywhere yeah. in the world. Correct. It could be <laughs> anywhere and you would still, wow, that's beautiful. That's a glass cube. Because, uh, and, uh, you know, all the buildings have become glass, right? And somewhere, sometimes you feel good also. And that's the way we are, we've been tuned in our mind that, oh, full glass facade building is like, tsk. in another five years, you'll see what the heck that was. You know, you'll really swear by, you'll swear and say that, you know, this is like so ugly. It, it takes us time to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, overcome that in, in, in initial fascination yeah. for such things. Slightly, uh, you know, uh, very personal opinion, okay. Uh, different segments of a society, uh, different different groups, right? In, in, in any civilization has various people playing different roles: doctors, engineers, uh, educationists, filmmakers, storytellers, right? Uh, without wanting to name anything, there is there will be a certain group in a, a, any ecosystem that would insist on homogeneity, right? And it is needed for control, it's, re it's needed for control. certain ease of doing certain things. It's needed for the market ma also, no? Uh, <laughs> it's needed for the market. For, for the market, right? It's, for me, it's the role of an artist to keep creating those noises and aberration and bring in some fluctuation that hopefully can ripple and a cause disruption. Some, some disruption if that's possible and re retain the hum retain our uh, the human, humane nature of all of us. We don't, we don't really, it's n impossible. We can look up to them, but it's impossible to become them and there's absolutely no need to become that, right? You need to find your own uh, journey. You, you need to find your own s storytelling. Yeah, right? and, and I think this can all, and this is not about art cinema or something. Yeah, I think it's even not. Yeah, it's not, within yeah. the mainstream, the popular idiom is so powerful. So it's not an art versus commercial sort no, of. No, no, it's thing. certainly not. No, no I mean, uh, yes, certain things. Uh, sorry if I may write. Certain things, e some easy things we pick up. Uh, wear a seat belt, uh, put a helmet. Uh, uh, so make sure we are telling children, the, sending the right message to children. But there's so many other things, so many other messages we are sending that we are actually not paying attention to because that's shaping the future of our nation, right? Uh, uh, so. Filmmakers, as filmmakers, I think uh, it's very critical that we need to be a little more thoughtful just beyond taking responsibility for seat belts and helmets. Important, but there's far more because you're influencing the minds of pe young people. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah absolutely. So, yeah. so this is again to both of you because both of you have produced also and uh, a lot of uh, sort of, uh, I mean, uh, one uh, blockage has been the idea of fund and the fact that animation is so expensive can be also not expensive. But like say if we look at uh, live action, there is a cinema that, uh, I mean I can get a location free, I can get two actors free, I can get, s whereas animation, the production process itself makes it quite its own. So how do you feel that this could be offset? What could be some of the ways can there be a system where somebody makes a short film, it uh, it it, uh, it does well, it maybe goes to festivals, which allows him again to go into a feature space, which is the way it's happening in the live action space. W what would be an ecosystem that you would encourage to build amongst uh, studio, industry, and filmmakers? Yeah. yeah. One One of the things that I would uh, really think would enable um, robust creative uh, uh, products to come out in animation is that there has to be a willingness from even the uh, setups that are production oriented to work with you know people who want to make films like for example me I mean I put in my own money to make uh, short films and my attempt is not to create fame for myself or uh, it, it, it is not that, it's not the agenda. It is also to uh, make the audience know what is, what is possible, what are, what are the good things that are possible with our own 
um, Indian animators, Indian storytellers, how we can tell it uh, interestingly and how as audience they also would like it. It's a test for myself also to know that okay, there is uh, this sort of an existence of audience. But if we, if we, it is always difficult, it's expensive to make such films. We have, we have, we have spent a lot of money onto this and it's something that I work on the, on one side, we make ads and then ad revenue, we, and the profits we put into this. It's a lot of work. We are not sustaining ourselves with animation, just pure animation in uh, IP. Type of animation. Yeah. And we are not making uh, artistic films alone, right? So, um, to sustain it, it's it's a great thing. Like if we can collaborate with big studios, like um, say for example, M MPC is there, you know, uh, you know, and Zebu is there. You know, we we work, we collaborate. No, I'm, 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 okay, we have, we are tiny. Yes, so in that sense, if we work with studios like that, then you know, uh, the, you, you put in the effort of people. It's also good for the people in the studio, who are who have become pretty much like hands. When they work on a project like this, they, they will also start thinking of ideas and they also want to make films. They, they get the kick out of Absolutely. working on something yeah. that makes an impact and they would like to be, they would be more proud to see their names in the credits of those films than the other films where they are just about there in the list and you know, uh, it, it doesn't matter in a, in a big film. Mm. But here, if we, if we do such sort of co co collaborations, we can produce without with with a win-win situation for both people. That's one model. The other model is the only model that can work in India to make a difference in the way animation industry or animation audience has created is to have a very very successful, commercially successful animation film. Moment you have a commercially successful animation feature film, the whole the game industry. changes. Mm. The industry changes. It it happened with Bahubali. Mm. Bahubali is a VFX heavy film with no particular hero at that point in time, right? It was a fictitious land that they created with no big uh, ticket hero and they managed to rake in big money and then many people tried to do the same formula. Some of them worked and, uh, uh, you know, it. similarly, if we can create a game changer in animation as a great that feature film, with our own story, which becomes popular here, then, like, I, I'm just fondly remembering how Hanuman uh, in 2001 or 2 uh, as a feature film was created. It was created for a couple of crores or something. It raked in some 30, 40 crores, is what I hear. And there were 70 feature films announced that very year. Everybody wanted to fund feature films. There were some diamond merchants who came to my studio and said that, you know, I want to make a film on my dog. So it, it, people had were ready to invest that much of money thinking that the returns are so much and you know we can repeat the same sort of success. Yashraj tried it and the others tried it, they failed, then the whole market went thunder. So that the whole ice age that is happening in the animation industry, local animation industry is mainly because big players tried and failed, so how can small players make it big? is the way distribution and the other uh, uh, notion is that is happening. So we need like a big success in that area and that can only happen if we all collaborate and create something. And moment there is a market like that, no, uh, Mike, I feel if there is a demand for high quality Indian animation films, then the audience will not take start, will not start taking anything lesser than that, which means the education institutes will have to boost up the way they produce their animation students uh, and their curriculum has to be relooked because uh, they need to produce... Everything will have to go They up. need to up the quality of people who are coming out of the institute. The production studios will have to keep reinventing new ways to entertain because the same trend setters cannot create the same uh, success okay. rates again because you can you can ape a couple of times. Like when Hanuman, after Hanuman, they were like... Ghadotkaj, this, that, so many, uh, you know, Lakshmi, all the goddesses were not spared. None of them were spared. <laughs> they tried with all their grown-up version and the small version, uh, it, the, the, you know, to really see whether they can repeat the success. Never they could do that. It's so, yeah. yeah. So sorry, sorry. A lot of hints. Uh, one last, if I, one minute, I'll take only one minute. 
right? Uh, to add to what, a, to like what, what would your perspective be for uh, the students? It's very similar. similar? I mean, yeah. if, you're a, if you're a small studio, we, we make money, we save money, and we try to make our own IP, right? If you're a student, there are different, very different approaches, right? In Karnataka, there's an elevated program. You can participate in it and hope to get a grant from the government, and that is one way for the students and even for smaller studios, right? Uh, the third thing is uh, reach out to small stu filmmaking st animation studios and try to sell the idea to them so that they can find a potential path of a revenue to, to produce your content. I mean, these are the three, four quick ways we can, I, we can think of at this point. And, uh, I think we need to stop, right? Yeah. So okay. You can't take any questions. Can we take one question? Let's take a few questions. Okay. Otherwise, it was a monologue. We just spoke and Hi. there were a lot of listings. And I can't. Hi. Uh, Hello. When I see each of your frame, each of your character tells a story, it's amazing, okay? Um, very few studios in India is able to pull out that kind of local content. Amazing, amazing. Thank you characters. so much. Thank you. But. Uh, what I see is a challenge is people with, you know, money standing behind people like you. So that is where the biggest gap is what right. I feel. If, if, for example, Yashraj must have hired you to do a film yeah. and funded you, it must have been a different story altogether. Absolutely. So that is where, you know, it has to come. And what are you all doing about it? Like, you know, <coughs> end of the day, you know, the, the best of the best artists are not great sellers. You know, we are not good at marketing. We're not good at selling ourselves. Yeah. So how do we change that and how do we uh, make that happen? So that, that also is, can be part of the education. So that is it something which is part. very, very important, you know, uh, yeah. you know, for someone to come and stand behind you and make that happen. For, yeah. for, we, uh, we rant, that's all we can yeah. do. <laughs> I, think, uh, I, think, I think the music industry is a good one to emulate, right? Yeah. Uh, music industry got, got agents to do the selling and the talking and the negotiation. I we think the animation need, industry will we some of need. yeah we need we need the business partners to be who part believes, of the yeah, part of the team you, yeah who right? believes in you know yeah, yeah they have to yeah. believe in it yeah yeah I mean if you look at uh, Miyazaki and if you look at his producer I mean they've been working together for no they they've yeah. also gone bankrupt yeah but you know a couple of times but they they revive again they revive it's, again it's a, it's a it's a tough business to be in absolutely yeah. yeah. Music industry is a good one to emulate for us, but I think. But music industry also went like really, you know, with the, the various the, 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 the agents the protecting the artists from huh, the... Yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, but yeah. it's not much there in India, you know. No, no, not in India, not, not in, in India. India. Yeah. 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 And internationally, it's a different scenario. Yeah. We don't talk about internationally. We are only talking local right now. Yeah. Local. It's a very, very good system that exists there. Yeah. Thank All right. you. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. I'm extremely sorry, uh, but we're really okay. running short of time. And that was an insightful discussion. Could we have a huge round of applause, please? And I, if, if I could request Mr. Chan to join us on stage and uh, present a memento to our uh, speakers on stage. What a fabulous panel discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, could we have a huge round of applause? Now you know how to create an original IP. That said, it's time for us to talk about visual effects beyond films. Now, visual effects have proven time and again to be a transformative force in filmmaking. But what happens if we take this magic beyond the traditional cinema experience? Today, 